Basically, you start out as a lowly gang member, uh, part of the, the Third Street Saints. Um, it's, a, it's a small gang that's really getting its butt kicked by three other gangs in the city. And the concept of the, of the, the game is you have to take your gang through, through what your, your actions, what you do out in the city. You literally um, raise your respect level of yourself and your gang in every district of the city, of which there's dozens of them. And, and, you, and you actually conquer each one. So you take them over for your gang, and in the end, you're supposed to take over the whole city. So that's the goal. And we have basically a process to doing that called activities. Um, it's not a mission-based game. There are missions in the game. They're kind of the culmination of taking over each district. You can, you can do a mission. But most of, most of the game is centered around what you do running around in the city. So it's about activities, we call them. We give you 13 activities, 12 of which have eight different layer, layers to them. So there are just tons of things you can do in the city. And as you do them, um, you don't have to finish them. They're not required in the game. But they support the idea of earning respect, and, and raising up your gang's level in that area. And so if you do enough of them, boom, you'll kick off a mission or a, an attack on a stronghold, an enemy stronghold, and you'll end up owning that area forever. So that's kind of the goal. You actually do get experience over time too because as you do things, as your respect level goes up, at some point you'll get promoted up in the gang. And as you go up in rank in the gang, the expectations are new change. Now you gotta get better clothes, you gotta get a better car. All this collection aspect is a big part of the game. Um, it's, it's expected that the player maintains his, his respect level inside the gang as well. So you can start off in the game, you actually can create yourself from scratch. You can create anything you want, any race you want, in sizes, you know, you can be tall, short, fat, thin. It's a complete character creation system which really has never been seen before in an open world game. And then you add to that a whole customization system where you can wear any kind of clothes, you can, you can add tattoos, you can do change your hair, all that sort of stuff. And you add that again, and the same thing can happen with cars. All that gives you this, this concept of this whole connected um, customization and creation system. And that actually has impact in the game. So you, if, you're wearing your, if you're wearing your colors, when you go out and do some, one of these activities, it'll actually give you a bonus toward respect. So if you go out in, in civilian clothes, you won't get that. And it'll take longer to do things you want to do. Um, you also get noticed by enemy gangs, of course, in your colors and not in others. So there's reasons why you might not want to wear your colors. But it does matter in the game and it actually affects gameplay. So wearing your colors is important. What we're seeing today is, is basically on final hardware. We've gotten our game up on the final hardware and we're very close to um, final feature set. We're not quite there yet. We still have some rendering um, features. We want to add frame buffer effects and uh, anti-aliasing isn't quite in. It'll be in in about three weeks as we go to the, the uh, Microsoft event in, in Amsterdam. Um, we'll have another build there that will have all the features. And uh, so what we're showing really is, is uh, an emphasis on sh uh, shader technology, the Shader 3 technology. You can see that in that level that we have here now. It's, it's really gone extreme. We use it through everything that we do. If we had to remake our cars and color them, we'd have to have, I don't know, I don't know how much more, many more artists because it's done through shader technology. It's the same thing with the physics engine. We're using Havoc. We kind of blow it out a bit. We let things kind of go uh, a little bit beyond normal. It's ultra realism, so guys are flying through the air, but it just adds to the fun. Again, it's about letting the player have the freedom to run around and do those things and have a, a payoff for him. The size of the world, well, it's not, it's not as big as, as um, some of the more recent open world games. It is, it's huge. I mean, they're, and it's open from the beginning. I mean, like I said, we don't unlock anything. So you have access to a city, this huge city with a downtown skyscrapers, all that sort of thing, all at the very beginning of the game. You can go anywhere you want and pretty much do whatever you want inside that. So it's huge. And that's one of the things that's actually taking so much time in, in development of the game is building the assets for this huge city and actually ne at a next gen level because that next gen level requires um, so many layers of texturing and things that normal mapping, all these map layers that have never been there before, it's six to ten times, one texture has six to ten times the amount of information on it than it used to have. Music's a very important part of the game. Um, we have, we're, we're right now collecting um, and signing up what, what will amount to be a well over a hundred songs, um, a different mix from hip hop to dance to, the well, pre predominance of hip hop, um, but dance, all kinds of different things because we have 12 radio stations two of which are talk radio, we may even have 13, we may add one more, but the other 10 are all, all different programming. So as you run around the city, you can change and, and play, you can actually even import your own uh, music MP, through an MP3 player system and it can actually allow you to play and add yours to the mix. So it's a pretty interesting and it's a very important part of the game obviously, the music is, you can collect it as well. It's another part of the aspect of collection that we have in the game. Uh, we've added uh, seven modes of multiplay. Um, there are at least 12, I think, areas of um, regions to play in, districts, we call them, and uh, up to 12 players can play at one time. It's also persistent, so there'll be gang versus gang, there'll be um, co-op uh, co play, 
and there's also persistency, which means that as you play, we track how long you're on. And so we reward you for your time on, and so in that end, you'll find that the, the best players will be all pimped out, because you can tell who the really good ones are. They'll have been able to spend their money in the online store and really made their character special. So you'll be able to tell the difference between the people who really play online and who don't. Pretty quick. Well, there's seven different game modes. Things like, uh, I think Big Ass Chains is one, and uh, in that one, the concept is everybody wears a big gold chain. And if you kill them, you get to collect their chain. And so the point is you can turn it in for points, right? But you can turn a chain in for points, and it scales up. So if you turn in five points, five chains, it's worth more than turning in uh, one chain five times. So five chains is more important to have. So if you hold them and try to collect more, you get killed, you're giving somebody all these chains. So the concept is, you know, to uh, runs over time, or, um, but the idea is whoever collects the most chains and gets the points for them. Is, 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 one, is one of the modes we have. We also have uh, a Bling My Ride, which is the concept of two, two gangs are really trying to take a car, bling it out to the nth degree, and take it to a location. Whoever gets it there first blinged out wins. But the point is you can destroy the other guy's car, and there's this whole interaction between the two gangs as they go around trying to do this, because they have to go to different places to buy the parts and, and bling out their car. So it's this, this mad rush, and, and also this uh, whole destruction of the other guy's vehicle in process. Uh, I think actually there's a whole next gen design in it. The whole concept of open play not being a linear system with this fun thing that everybody does that doesn't matter. We, our focus is on making everything the player does have some purpose in the game. Even if it's just you know running around shooting things, you get respect for doing that. It's not tons, but it's something toward the end game. So that as the player has fun, he actually is pushing himself toward a goal as well. I think that's one. That's like to us, it's next gen gameplay. It's next gen con. The whole the whole. Uh, game is built on an engine that is made just for this next gen. And it's also made just for open world. We believe that there were, like, people talk about GTA clones, but they talked about Doom clone at the beginning when there was all these first person shooters that are now first person shooters were called Doom clones. Well, I, we believe that this is a genre and it should be treated that way. And that's what we're, our company is really gearing toward that concept of open world gaming. And so we're trying to learn that process, trying to learn how to do that properly and design in that world. Right? And so that's what we're all about right now. In, in the end, it will be called open world or whatever they want to call it. You know, open city. I don't know what the name is going to be, but there will be a genre that is this kind of game. And that's where we are. We give you uh, missions like go kill this guy, and, but use this weapon. You don't have to, but if you do, it gives you a bonus. So it's like, okay, maybe they want you to knife the guy, or maybe they want you to use a sniper rifle. So it's all kind of ties together. And it's like, you don't have to, but again, it's, it'll give you a little bit boost if you do. And we're not trying to control the player, we're trying to give him um, extra bonuses for things he does that he enjoys doing. So if a guy likes to use a knife, great, go do it. But you know, if you use a sniper rifle, you get an extra you know, 500 points or whatever in terms of respect, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's interesting that way. Um, we, we're, again, we're putting in things in the game that are just fun. Like the rocket launcher is a blast. People spend more time running around with launcher and just blowing things up because it, Havoc works so well in the system. The physics are working so well that, and the damage models work so well that it's just fun to do. Um, plus, there's a whole persona system, which I haven't talked about. That's this, this whole, lang or whole conversation system that's extremely deep with all the civilians and all the people around you that you, we really haven't touched the surface on yet in here, but it's going in as we speak. And it just adds this reality to the world that hasn't been seen before in open world. That's another thing that we kind of really should talk about, this idea that we're trying to create a much more realistic world. Um, the, things you, the people respond in ways that make more sense. You, they say things that make more sense. If you're a low-level thug and you're downtown in the, in the money district, they're going to be calling you names and telling you, get your ass out of here, you, you know, go back to where you belong kind of stuff. But if you raise up in rank and you're, and you're a lieutenant or something, you're down there, you will get treated completely differently based on the fact that you're, you're something, you know, you have some power. And power in the game matters and people respond to it. We've talked about launch window and I think that's the, the kind of the phrase we're still at, but Brian's feeling about, Brian Farrell's feeling about the whole thing um, is that we should finish the game the way it should be finished. We should do the game right. So it's, it's, it's kind of thing to us is when it's done. You know, ship it when it's done, make sure it's right. Because this is for us an opportunity, we think that um, uh, we can really establish ourselves in this next generation right, the right way through our own engine, you know, through our own development of, of this open world design technology. We started two and a half years ago saying, we wanted to be in the open world. And then along came next gen, it was like, yeah, this is perfect. And it tied into our whole plan. So our process of you know, doing it right on next gen, doing it right in open world, uh, the game needs to be done right. So that's kind of where we're at. So what does that mean? Not sure yet. We're still, we're still shooting for launch window. We're, still, we're raising the city up basically from scratch. 
and we've, we've gone through a couple of phases on it. We have three phases in the whole city. So what you're seeing here is close to final or third phase in this district. There'll be two more in three weeks that are to final, so we can show them off at the, uh, at the uh, um, Xbox 360 Fest in Amsterdam. So it's all coming together, and it's coming together real well, but, but there's a lot of work to be done in those assets. So we're still working on that. It's not driven by uh, the technology of it. We've, we've pretty much solved that. We feel really good about it. Um, it's more about just the content in, in terms of assets is huge. Like I said, the layering, uh, normal mapping, it's created a whole other kind of artist we didn't have before, the technical artist. So it's, it's an amazing change for us.